Well, Sir Keir Starmer will head to Manchester today as he continues to flex Labour's security credentials, raising the alarm over the energy reliance on rogue foreign states like Russia. Meanwhile, the Liberal Democrats will be campaigning on the need for better day-to-day -day care for adults in need, including the elderly and disabled. Well, let's speak to the deputy editor at Spiked, Fraser Myers, about what was a momentous day yesterday. Um, so many entertaining comment pieces in the papers today. Comments like, just when we thought this was going to be the most boring election outside of North Korea, <laughs> in comes Nigel Farage. Lots of interesting layers to this, though. And one of the columns that I um, have just been reading, Stephen Glover, in the mail, saying, funnily enough, him entering into the contest at this precise moment in his career, if he's successful, because this is his seventh attempt, if he's successful, could actually undo some of his own personal achievements, such as Brexit, because actually he'd be handing power to Labour, who want closer alignment with Europe. Well, I think, first of all, it is right to say that this has given the election a shot in the arm. It has been a pretty lifeless campaign. People are getting a bit demoralised, I think, with the sort of Sunak v Starmer snooze fest. You know, <laughs> on the one hand, you have uh, a Tory leader who's betrayed his own voters. On the other hand, you have a Labour leader who seems to believe in nothing beyond his own uh, election into, into Downing Street. Uh, so this has given us something fresh to think about. Um, it's going to shake things up. Uh, is Farage um, potentially betraying himself, is the question being asked, by helping Keir Starmer uh, with a perhaps enhanced majority? Everyone assumes that Farage is going to be taking votes off um, the Tories, uh, particularly in you know, the most difficult seats that, where, they're, uh, where they're struggling. I mean, yes and no. Uh, we know Keir Starmer's an inveterate Remainer. He can't necessarily be trusted on the Brexit question. But do the Tories have a right to rule, I suppose, is the question you can put Well, obviously not, mate, because the, the latest polls are saying 194-seat majority uh, to Labour on this. And the thing that I scratch my head mm. about is, how is that even possible with the man as dull and boring? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I mean, you just you look as Keir Starmer, you think, who in the right mind would actually say he should lead the country? And yet 194-seat majority, which shows just how people think the Conservatives have done such a poor job. Well, exactly. And a 194-seat majority would be larger than Blair in 1997. I think it would be the second largest in UK history. Mm. And again, for Keir Starmer, of all people, I think this is entirely a product of the Tory collapse. I don't think there are very many people at all out there who are enthusiastic about a Labour government who are even very clear, particularly what Labour or Keir Starmer stand for. Mm. This is a product of the Tories turning back on their voters, particularly their newer voters, the voters they won over after Brexit in 2019. If you look at the drill down in some of that polling, it looks as if the red wall seats that Boris Johnson famously won over to the Tories, they're going to go entirely back to Labour by the looks of things. Again, it's by Tory voters, most of the time, most of them not going towards Labour, many of them saying they're not going to vote or they don't know. Mm or switching towards reform and Nigel Farage. And one thing that's been interesting is that over the past two weeks, uh, the polls haven't really moved at all. Will Farage throwing his flat cap into yeah. the ring change that? Well, this 194-seat majority, uh, this bombshell poll, was conducted before this announcement, so one Precisely. can only imagine what it might be like if it was done today. Um, the big scalps that have come out in this poll is likely to lose their seats. We already knew we're in contention, but Jeremy Hunt, Penny Morden, Grant Shapps and Gillian Keegan, all senior members within the Cabinet. So what are the Tories doing today to come out all guns blazing and try and win back the narrative Talking about immigration, but this time setting a cap on those who come in as foreign workers. Is that going to swing it? Why haven't they done that before? Well, I think people will point out that uh, the Tories have proposed this. I think this is the fourth time right. this has been proposed by the Conservatives. And people will rightly ask, well, why haven't you done this mm. before? Even when we were in the EU, they could have done this to uh, non-EU migrants. Uh, for whatever reason, they chose not to. I think what has happened to the Tories is that they've almost... People are not listening to them anymore. So there has been this sort of policy blitz over the past couple of weeks, um, some quite you know, eye-catching policies from national service to uh, pensions quadruple lock and, and now this uh, cap on immigration. But I think a lot of people have just stopped listening. They're thinking, we don't trust you, especially on immigration, where they promised in 2019 to bring immigration down. I think the you know, net migration tripled. Mm. So it, it, <laughs> everything's been going in the wrong direction under the Tories and, and people have had enough. What direction will it go for, Keir, uh, for uh, Rishi Sunak um, after all of this? Presumably he's annihilated 
at the, uh, the polls. How do you see the new Conservative Party emerging? Well, I think, actually, this is what Farage is really playing for. Perhaps not. he's not going to... I don't think it's likely that he's going to get a lot of seats. Perhaps he will win in Clacton, where he's standing. But I don't think anyone is expecting reform to, to sweep the board or to replace the Conservative Party in Parliament. But will he influence the direction of travel after the election, when the Tories are in opposition? I think that's what he's hoping to do, to ensure that the Tories don't go down this kind of one-nation, liberal centrist route in the way that they were sort of... So you to could do still under. see Farage as a member of the Conservative Party? Well, let's see. I wouldn't put anything... Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't rule anything out. And I think it's interesting to look at what, what is Farage thinking about. We talk a lot in Britain, um, we've been thinking, what's this election going to look like? Is it going to look like 92? Yeah. Where the Tories, you know, miraculously uh, hold on, like John Major did? Or will it be 97, where there'll be a sort of wipeout, um, thanks to Tony Blair? Actually, Farage is thinking about Canada in 1993. So this is where the Conservative Party of Canada was reduced to a rump of just two seats, going from government to two seats. And that was partly because they lost seats to a right-wing challenger party. The name of that right-wing challenger party was Reform. Interesting. And later on, the two parties were mer merged, um, and so the mm. right-wingers there were able to influence the mainstream uh, centre-right. It's so interesting. I mean, he said, not on your Nelly, is there going to be any sort of deal with the Tories? He said over the weekend he wanted to destroy it. Kemi Badnock mm. yesterday, who's being touted widely as a replacement for Sunak after the election, said absolutely would not welcome him into the party's campaigned us against us for decades. So there doesn't seem to be a lot of love lost at the moment between the two, but who knows? We could see yes. defections the other way from yeah. Tories on the right of the party well, look, over to join him if he does get into Parliament. Mystic Myers. Thank you very much Thank indeed uh, for your predictions there. Very, very interesting. And if it's got you thinking, it's got you talking, get in touch today and we'll have Fraser back in about 50 minutes' time. Yeah, worth mentioning as well, of course, as Nigel Farage is standing in Clacton, there are a whole host of other candidates as well um, up for election. So Jovan Awusu Nepal is the Labour Party's candidate, Giles Watling for the Conservatives, uh, Matthew Ben Sillam for the Lib Dems, uh, Farage, as you know, Nigel Farage for Reform, Natasha Osborne for the Greens. And the list of candidates isn't finalised as the deadline isn't until later this week, so there could be more additions there. It will be published on the GB News website once it is finalised. GB News has extended an interview invitation to all the candidates taking part in that constituency.